Welcome back to Africa This Week with me, Ayo Johnson. It has been held as one of the jewels of the United Kingdom, but the NHS sparked more debate about budget cuts may now be facing further cuts to those services that could affect migrant workers. Our reporter, Adma Munu, has more on this. Thousands of foreign nurses working in junior posts in the UK could be forced to return to their countries of origin with a shake-up to immigration rules. The government wishes to curb migrant labour in the NHS by introducing a new pay threshold for migrants, which will be introduced next year. It will mean non-European workers will have to leave the UK after six years if they are not earning a minimum of £35,000. The government states this falls in line with their efforts to recruit more homegrown nurses and health workers. But the Royal College of Nursing said the rules would cause chaos for the NHS. The college released research this week, suggesting up to 3,365 nurses who cost over £20 million to recruit could be affected. But it says the figure could spiral by 2020, particularly if workforce pressures lead to increased international recruitment, in which case just under 30,000 nurses could be affected. Figures released also show average earnings for an entry-level nurse and staff nurse for well below £35,000, which may affect junior nurses from black and ethnic minority communities, as 94% of senior nurse director positions in 2009 in England were white British. With Africans being the fourth largest group making up NHS foreign workers, the policy is expected to affect hundreds of African nurses working in the United Kingdom, namely those from South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana and Zimbabwe. This comes at a time where the NHS is said to be on life support with seething austerity cuts and funding gaps of up to £2 billion in England alone. A report published in the journal Nursing Ethics looked at foreign nursing recruitment from countries in the Global South as a source of a global health care risk. The NHS, however, is a cornerstone of British society and has always been reliant upon migrant forces, as it was after World War II. With plans for what is seen as controversial austerity measures to take place, the NHS may need to continue to recruit from overseas. Adam Aminu, Africa This Week. To discuss this, we have in the studio Dr. Warwick Onyema, who is the former medical doctor and consultant for Lewis and Guy's NHS Mental Health Trust. On the line, we have Tatiana Nagasi Vito, who is the migrant rights activist. And we also have on the line Dr. Julian Simpson, who is a research associate at the Center of History of Science, Technology and Medicine. Welcome to all of you. Um, Dr. Anyama, if I could ask you, um, could you sort of tell me, do you think that these proposals uh, go enough? Uh, do, you, do you think they send sort of the wrong signals as to how the conservative government truly feels about the NHS? Well, I don't know what signals they send about the, NH the um, conservative thoughts about the NHS, but I can say one thing, and that is that if they're carried through to the letter, it will have a major impact on NHS staffing, particularly in specialties that are less attractive to indigenous graduates. Well, um, well, let me put my question to Julian Simpson, Dr. Julian Simpson, if you could. Uh, do you think that Africans who are a minority group in the United Kingdom, do you think that they play a significant role in the NHS? I think absolutely, and what uh, has just been said is absolutely right. They tend to play a role in areas uh, where, I mean, as happens in other areas of the, the economy, and you see migrants doing jobs that... Uh, local people don't want to do. You see exactly the same phenomenon in the NHS uh, and significant numbers of uh, Africans uh, working in, uh, in particular roles and uh, also people from, uh, from other countries. And that, that historically has really always been the case since the uh, inception of the NHS in 1948. The system has always been highly dependent on migrant workers. Well, um, Tatiana, if you could sort of tell me, um, 35,000 pounds uh, which is what's expected for the average nurse to earn uh, over a six-year period. I is that possible? Uh, and if so, what will happen to all those nurses? Well, no, it is not possible. Um, and actually, since the passing of the latest Immigration Act uh, in 2012, 
thousands of families have been separated and in turn broken apart as a result of these draconian and very inhumane measures that impose unrealistic income thresholds on people. But for the particular case of nurses, the immigration rules will risk intensifying the severe shortages of nurses in the UK. We were just listening to the, uh, to the report that the Royal College of Nurses published this week, in, uh, in which they calculated that up to 4,000 nurses currently working in the UK will potentially be affected by this rule. And if uh, inter international recruitment stays at the same level as it is now, by 2020, the number of nurses affected by the threshold will be over 7,000. And this will mean that, uh, that we will, pay, we will have to pay from our pockets or around 200,000 million uh, just for recruiting, recruiting these, these professionals again. So there are going to be losses uh, for everyone if this, if this rule is, 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 is implemented. Well, um, Dr. Anyame, if you could so help us with this, because the so-called notion of the brain drain that has happened across Africa, where um, a lot of qualified people have left the continent, come into the West, um, many people will say it's time that those people go back home and take care of their own. Uh, do you subscribe to that? <laughs> I think it's an unrealistic expectation. I'll tell you why. The reason for the brain drain, I'm a typical example of this, is that the countries of origin, the African countries, could neither provide either the resources or the security of life that professional people regarded as their right. And so they left the place and went abroad. Now, you also have the situation in which you have very highly qualified uh, Africans leaving their country to go westward uh, to perform tasks that are well below their level of qualification. But, Dr. Yeah. Yane, if I could, sorry to interject there, but um, many of those people who come to the UK don't go back home. Uh, that, is so that is correct. Well, that is exactly what's going, you can expect to happen. Once they settle here, then they'll probably stay here till retirement, once they can meet the needs of their families. But not anymore at £35,000 over six years, which must be earned by a typical nurse, which seems very unlikely, they would have to go back home. Well, they'll probably move somewhere else or move laterally into something else because basically that particular uh, figure is cited for people earning within the NHS. All that will happen is that people who earn below that, and let me be honest with you, most nurses and healthcare workers, uh, particularly at assistant level, earn well below that. And uh, they will simply move from the NHS into some other area of endeavour. Well, uh, some other area of endeavor. Dr. Simpson, um, do you think that this will put off African nurses who were contemplating of coming into Europe, coming to the UK to use their highly qualified skills? Would they say would they go to the United States or probably stay in Africa itself? Uh, well, I don't know about staying in Africa itself because of the lack of opportunities, as has been mentioned. But I think it's absolutely right to say that the healthcare market is an international market. I think it's a big mistake that uh, the UK is making because it always has been uh, dependent on migrant workers and it actually has to compete on an international market to attract people. And I think if we are sending out this message that, you know, in a way, we're going to make it difficult for people to build careers and uh, lives in the UK, I think the UK is going to suffer because, yes, people will be making choices between, you know, going to the UK, going to the Middle East, maybe going to North America, and they'll be looking at uh, terms and conditions on offer elsewhere, and they'll maybe be thinking that it's more advantageous for them to, uh, to go over there, and therefore the NHS will suffer. And I don't think it's going to be as easy as uh, maybe the government uh, thinks to replace those, uh, those workers with uh, people trained locally. Uh, Tatiana, if you could help me with this, because how would a nurse who's very much um, doesn't feel valued, um, very much on very low wage, clearly the 35,000 threshold they're unlikely to meet, how are they meant to meet that psychological test of accepting that and be able to do their jobs under very difficult circumstances with the possibility of being thrown out of the UK? Yeah, I just wanted uh, to also to comment on the last question that you were that you were asking, uh, because I thought it was a really really good question. Uh, this Tory government has been promising that it will bring net migration down using all these draconian and very racist in the East rules that uh, have. Uh, have implemented uh, uh, with on people migrating to the UK, but it has actually failed and totally failed because instead of bringing net, net migration down, the UK has increased 
its levels of exploitation, trafficking, inequality, discrimination, racism, massive incarceration, among many other violations of our human rights. So I'm sure all these proposals will not put uh, people off uh, from coming to the, uh, uh, to the UK, but certainly more people will be exposed to all these situations when they come to the UK. Yes, exposed. Um, Dr. Simpson, uh, do you think uh, a lot of the nurses feel exposed right now, um, not knowing exactly whether they are in the UK or out, uh, having to contend with having to do their jobs effectively under very challenging circumstances? Uh, can you sort of explain to us what are those challenging circumstances that those nurses are facing right now? Well, I think clearly everyone who works in the NHS uh, currently is feeling under pressure uh, from the period of austerity that we're, we're going through. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's quite uh, clear. Uh, I do think that in, in terms of uh, nurses who have the ability to uh, offer their labour on an international uh, market, they do have the choice as to whether to, uh, to stay in the UK or to go elsewhere. And I, I think people will, I mean, I, I can't speak for, it for individual nurses, uh, but I think certainly it would be logical to think that you know, people would be making, uh, making those decisions and thinking through those, uh, those issues as to what is better for them in the, um, in the long term. I think there is a problem here. The UK has a problem, which is that it needs migrant workers. It has historically needed migrant workers. But there's been a lack of recognition of that and of the role that people play in British life. And because of that, there's quite a toxic political discourse that just says, well, migrants are a problem. And, you know, actually, migrants are people who are part of daily life, who are essential to the functioning of the, of the British state. Uh, but, you know, governments tend to ignore that. And I think that's why there's this tension in between, you know, these announcements about, you know, the need to control immigration and actually the fact that, you know, the figures um, don't tend to, uh, to go down because, in actual fact, if people come to this country, it's because there is a need for the labor that they provide. And I, I do think that at, you know, at a certain stage, the government is going to come unstuck with this. I think the Royal College of Nursing is absolutely right to raise concerns about the effect this is going to have on the NHS. And I think that at some point, some sort of compromise is going to have to be reached because otherwise it will have a really significant and negative effect on the NHS. Well, uh, well Dr. Anyame, uh, um, you've worked for the NHS uh, for many, many years. You know exactly how it works. Uh, do you think that the nurses are likely to vote with their feet as a liberalized people they are uh, and choose another country or even go back to Africa where their services are required, be that they may not have half as much in terms of money? Well, I think they will certainly vote for their feet the moment they see that their prospects are limited. Uh, that is, when they see that the gap between their earnings and the earnings that will, their actual earnings and the earnings that are required for them to stay here is so great they will never bridge it. I think then they will vote for their feet and they will either go to other countries or they will go into other remunerative activities. The one thing they won't do is go back to Africa because Africa, let us take for instance one country, Nigeria. Nigerian states have not been able to pay their workers for the last seven months. So nobody's going to go back to that kind of fiscal black hole because there's absolutely nothing there. They will simply move between European countries and the Middle East and North America in search of, uh, of uh, activity that will pay them a wage. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for in this episode. I want to thank all my guests for joining us and to you at home for watching. Do remember that you can keep up with us on Twitter by following at the Islam channel by using the hashtag Africa This Week. You can also send us an email with your comments to Africa This Week at the Islam channel TV. We'll be back next week, Saturday, at the same time. Until then, have a good weekend.